الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله الإسلام is a religion of ikhlas sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of the things that negate sincerity to Allah Azza wa Jal is to supplicate to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because supplication is act is an act of ibadah and the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself alayhi salatu wasalam should not be supplicated to and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a dua hu ibadah that supplication is ibadah so the issue here habit fillah is not whether we're talking about the life of barzakh and people being alive in the life of Barzakh, which we have no knowledge about, except for what has come from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, the issue at hand here, or whether the, the dead here or not, this is not the issue. The issue of Habit al at hand is whether it is shirk, kufr, takes you out of the fold of Islam, to supplicate other than Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, meaning supplicate to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or supplicating to Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, or supplicating to Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, or supplicating to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, or Ibrahim, or any of the NBA alayhi maftal salatu wasalam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly answers this with the muhkamat, the ayat that are clear in the Quran. And before we even get to that, we have to understand, as we mentioned prior to this, and I believe in my uh, hurriedness, that I perhaps made a mistake in the ayat, so I want to read re directly from Ali Imran, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Fi kitabi al kareem bada audi bil lamin shaitan al rajim bismillah rahman rahim alif lam mim alif lam mim nazal alik al kitab bil haki musaddak al nima bain yaday wa nzal al Torah wa nanjil." من قبل هدى للناس وانزل الفرقان إن الذين إن الذين الله سبحانه وتعالى says إن الذين كفروا بآيات الله لهم عذاب شديد والله عزيز ذو الانتقام إن الله لا يخفى عليه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء هو الذي يصوركم في الأرحام كيف يشاء لا إله إلا هو العزيز الحكيم هو الذي this is the shahid the point of mentioning this ayat هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب وأخرى متشابهات فأما الذين في قلوبهم زيد فيعتبعون ما تشابه منه ابتغاء الفئنة وابتغاء تأويله أحب في الله this is so applicable to our discussion Allah سبحانه وتعالى says في كتاب الكريم it is he who has sent down to you, O Muhammad, the book. In it are verses that are precise, meaning they are the found they are the foundation of the book, and others unspecific, meaning that there are some verses that are muhkamat, and that they are the legislative verses that are very clear, like the ayats of Tawheed, which we should know. This is just amazing to me. That's why it's hard for me to just talk about this and have a discussion in a very calm fashion because it just amazes me that some people would make a likeness after Tawheed being so clear because those of us who tasted Kufr, we left Kufr, we left Christianity for these reasons but then you have those who maybe were born into the religion of Islam usually, because it's usually not reverts who hold these kind of concepts but per, there are but to Yes, to, to, to revert to this kind of disbelief that you would take the beauty of Tawheed and then you would, as we've been released from the prison of worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying that he is partners and saying that there are likenesses to him like Jeet and saying that Isa alayhi salatu wasalam is his son and so forth to then go and try to make a resemblance between the beautiful religion of Tawheed and Ikhlas to that which, to Catholicism and those other faiths, those faiths we left. We left those various 
forms of worship because they involved shirk, they involved associating a partner. They didn't give divinity to the divine, to Allah Azza wa Jal, Al Khalik, Al Bari. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily those Inna Ladina Where's the ayat? Allah Tabarakatala says Inna Ladina Kafru bi ayati lahi lum madamun shirid wallahu azizu dhulun diqam Inna Allah la yakhfa alayhi shayun fil ardi wala fil sama Hu ladhi yusawarakum fil arhami kayfa yasha la ilaha ila lukku huwa al-azizu al-hakim Hu ladhi anzala alayka al-kitab minhu ayatun muhkamatun hunna umu al-kitab wukhra mutashabihat fa amma ladhina fi qulubihim zayd فيتبعون ما تشابه منه منه ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويله ولا يعلم تأويله إلا الله وراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر إلا أول الباب الله سبحانه وتعالى says and he has sent to you the book and it are verses that are precise they are the foundation of the book and others meaning more ambiguous as for those whose in whose heart is a deviation from the truth, they will follow that of which is unspecific, seeking discord, seeking an interpretation, meaning suitable to them. And no one knows its true interpretation except the law, but those firm in knowledge say we believe in all of it from our Lord, and no one will be reminded except those of understanding. Ahabatifillah, all throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for us the muhkamat, those ayat which are very clear, and the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, because we don't have a precedence from ulama of Ahl Sunnah who say that it's permissible to supplicate to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and ask him to assist us. We already know that it's thabit in the deen to give salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa but is giving salam like supplication? Of course not. Imam Malik said, Imam Darul Hijra, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, when he was teaching in the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid, he said, La ara an yaqif inda al-qabri nabi, qabr nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yad'u lakin yusallam yumdi. Imam Malik said, he says, I don't see that it's permissible to stand in uh, at the grave of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and supplicate, however, or rather, give salams and then proceed on. Imam Abu Bakr Al Tartushi he said, Wala yatamsah bi qabr bi Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam wala yamas كذلك القبر ولكن يدنو من قبري فيسلم على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم يدعو مستقبل الكبلة. So the Imam said that it is not permissible to go to the grave of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم except that you go uh, and 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 to you know wipe the grave or anything like this or any grave. He said, but rather you should. Go towards the grave of the Prophet ﷺ, proceed close to it, give salams to the Prophet ﷺ, then face the Qibla and make dua. And this is why. Why did the great A'imma uh, do this? Because they said that you should not face the grave of the Prophet ﷺ, but rather you should face the Qibla. And this would not confuse the people so that they would believe that you were supplicating to the grave. Supplicating to Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Imam Anawi said on Abi Hassan al Zafarani, Yukul Faman Qasida salam ala mate, salama alayhi min kibble wajhu. We either arada dua to howl on Moldi'ihi wa istakbal al kibla. So Imam Nawawi reported that Imam Abi Hassan al Zafrani said, Rahimahumullah Jami'an, that his statement, so whoever has the intention to give salam to the dead, that he should do so facing 
their grave. But if you want, if you want to supplicate, then change to the position of supplicating to the and, and supplicate towards the qibla, supplicating to Allah Jalla. All of that habit allows to give us a, 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 a how the salaf used to deal with these matters. But when we look at the ayats, these are the muhkamat. These are the clear that you cannot debate, you cannot argue, you cannot hide from the nasus. Let's go to what the Kitab Allah, what Allah Jalla says about this himself. Does Allah say that we should supplicate to anyone other than him? Or does he make very severe inqar? This is the question we're researching. Follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabi al kareem Wala ted'u min duni lahi ma la yanfa'uk wa la yudurruk fa in fa'alta fa innaka fa in fa innaka idhan min al-zalimin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al kareem And do not supplicate to other than Allah So Allah has already closed that gate And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates something or makes a nahi in something in the Quran it means that it is prohibited It doesn't mean that there's some room for this or room for that. Allah has made a nahi unless you have evidence otherwise from the Quran and the Sunnah and or the Sunnah to show that this is mustahab or that it's gotten from uh, from haram to makruh. That's a qaida. So take that principle and benefit from it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates. He says, Wala tad'u min duni lahi ma la yanfa'uk wa la yudurak. Do not supplicate to other than Allah, to anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That which will not benefit you, nor harm you. For verily, if you do that, then verily you are the Valimun. The Valimin. Imam, we have to read this beautiful statement in the tafsir. Because it's one of the earliest tafsir. Imam Atabari, what did he say about this? And I didn't want to make this a long thing, but I want to give you the nus because I could easily give you the, the malachas, the summary, but I want you to hear the nus so no one can claim that I was distorting something. Imam At-Tabari said with regards to this ayat Rahimahullah Ta'ala he said that the one the one who Yaqulu Ta'ala Dhikrahu وَلَا تَدْعُوا يَا مُحَمَّدْ So he said, مِن دُونِ مَعْبُودَكْ وَخَالَكَكْ شَيْءٍ لَا يَنْفَعُكْ وَلَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَلَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا يَضُرُكْ فِي الدِّينِ وَلَا الدُّنْيَا يَعْنِي بِذَلِكَ إِلَاهَ وَأَسْنَامْ يَقُولْ لَا تَعْبُدَهَا رَاجِهًا رَاجِهًا نَفَعَهَا أَوْ خَائِفًا ضُرَّهَا فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَنْفَ and then he said about the rest of the ayat, فَإِنْ فَعَلْتَ ذَلِكَ فَدَعَوْتَهَا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ That you supplicated the other Allah. فَإِنَّكَ إِذَنْ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ يُقُولْ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ بِاللَّهِ الظَّالِمِ أَنفُسِهِمْ This is what, it doesn't matter what many people who say لا إله إلا الله do, but here's what the great Mufassirin said about this ayat. He said that this ayat was addressed to the Prophet ﷺ not meaning it was restricted to him, but he said, Do not, Wala Tedru Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad, do not supplicate to other than the one who you worship, which means Allah, your creator, the, crea the creator of all things, because nothing can benefit you in this dunya, nor in the hereafter except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor harm you in the religion or in this life. Any, and, and then Imam Tabari explained, yani, with this he, meaning any gods or any asnam, any um, idols, meaning nothing can, can accept, even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can't help you. And then he said, and do not worship it seeking or hoping for its benefit or fearful of its harm, meaning that thing that you're worshiping other than Allah or that prophet that you're worshiping other than Allah or that 
and that malaika that you're supplicating to other than Allah because supplication is ibadah as we already affirmed. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said a dua huwa ibadah. Sahih Tirmidhi. Supplication is ibadah. It is worship. Then he said because it won't help you and it won't harm you. And if you do that, the, the last statement he said, then explaining what it means, Lali mean, he says, then you are the, the one who does this, meaning supplicating to other than Allah. Other than Allah. It doesn't matter whether it's the Prophet Muhammad, it doesn't matter whether it's Krishna, it doesn't matter if it's the Pope, it doesn't matter if it's Jesus, that you're one of the mushrikeen. That verily the one who does this is one of the mushrikeen, one of the pagans who have oppressed themselves. Lali me and Fusihim, as he said. They've oppressed themselves. And there's so much more that we can gain from the tafasir. And from the ayat, we could just stick with the nasus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَا اللَّهِ إِلَهٍ آخِرٍ فَتْكُونُ مِنَ الْمُعَذِّبِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And do not supplicate to, uh, uh, with Allah, another God, and then become one of the ones who are punished. Meaning that anything you take as a God, other than Allah, even if you say, you will, no, we don't, we don't uh, take the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi as God, but yet you direct an act of ibadah, which is supplication, asking him to carry your dua, asking the dead to carry your dua, asking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi to supplicate for you. All of it's ibadah. All of it is worship that other than Allah. And the beautiful qaida or principle in fiqh is that al-ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musammiyat, that the proof of something is in its substance or its reality not in its name. So regardless, this is one of the biggest things between Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Bid'ah, especially with regards to this mas'ala, that you have a lot of people of Tasawwuf and, and so forth, the Sufis, that they will say that, no, we're not worshiping Allah. We're, we're, we're supplicating to the essence of the human being or supplicating to this energy or supplicating to someone who is a righteous person or supplicating to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who is close to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or supplicating to the Malaika we're supplicating to them, but it's not the kind of supplication of ibadah. But the Prophet ﷺ said, a dua hu ibadah. And letting us know that supplication, all of it, all supplication, is ibadah. And those who supplicate with Allah, again, you've committed shirk, you've joined a partner with Allah. If I say, O oh Muhammad, please, because I am so sinful, please carry my dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and help me and my family. I've supplicated to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa I didn't supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can supplicate directly to Allah, unlike the Catholics who have to go through their priests and, and the ones who they repent to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَلَا تَدْعُوا مَا اللَّهِ إِلَهٍ آخر لا إله إلا هو كل شيء حالك إلا وجه Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and do not supplicate with Allah another God meaning anything worship besides Allah لا إله إلا هو there is no God worthy of worship except Him everything will be destroyed except His face subhanAllah and there are so many ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when al-masajid al-lillahi fala ta'du ma Allahi ahada and verily the masajid are for Allah, so do not supplicate to other than Allah anyone. Worship is only to Allah. That's what we're trying to affirm here. So we don't, no matter how kind of ta'wil, as we said, ibtiga al-fitna wa ibtiga ta'wili in Surah Ali Imran, that seeking to interpret, using other ayats, the mutashabiha, those ayats which are not clear and don't give us a clear hukum, we cannot take from what that the previous NBA, if some of them, uh, Allah gave them some uh, knowledge of the unseen to say that we can have knowledge of the unseen or something, or that we, or the dead heard in this, or those, ver those uh, ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where the Prophet Sallallahu uh, made khatab to the dead, where he spoke to the dead. We can't use those as, and, and make ithbat al-hukum. We can't make a hukum. Those are the mutashabihat, because they're, because the clear verses and the clear Sunnah is so clear as as this lamp is clear that it shows us that it's absolutely impermissible to supplicate to other than Allah and that supplication in general is ibadah, it's worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we keep having kareem, wad'uhu mukhlisin lahuddin and supplicate to him so with sincerity, 
For him is the religion. It's for Allah. It's to Allah. It belongs to Allah. And we worship Allah alone. And we will return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ed'u rabbukum tadhurra'in wa khufiyyan wa khufiyyatan innuhu la yuhibbul mu'tadeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And supplicate to your Lord with humility and fearful, out of fearfulness. This is to Allah. Allah could have easily said, and to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu or as a wasila through the Prophet sallallahu That would be clear. But we have no authority from Allah or anyone. Allah has not given us that right to legislate that because it's, it has to do with the haq of Allah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was, was, was with, with uh, Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala on a donkey and he said, Ya uh, Ya Mu'ad, tadri ma haq Allah al ibadi wa ma haq al ibadi ala Allah. Qultu Allah wa Rasulu alam. Qala haq Allah al ibadi an ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bi shayin. Wa haq al ibadi ala Allah an la yu'adhiba man la yushriku bi shayin. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was with Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. And he said, O oh Mu'ad, do you know the right of Allah upon a servant and the right of the servant upon Allah? And Mu'ad radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, the right of Allah upon a servant is that his servant only worships him and him alone. Not me and him alone. Or not that he supplicates with me as a wasail, uh, as a wasila. But that he worships him and him alone. And the right of the servant upon Allah, that only Allah gives this right and only Allah can enforce this right, is that Allah will not punish the one who does this. So Habit al shows us again, what? That this worship, this supplication is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's his haq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem, ku rabbukum ad'uni yastajib lakum inna ladhin yastakhbiruna an ibadati fa sayyadukhuluna jahannama dakhirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and say, uh, and your Lord has said, Allah said it. It doesn't matter what your Shaykh has said and anyone who's, who's taken the mutashabihat. Allah has said, uh, supplicate to me. This is what Allah said, supplicate to me. And I will give you, I will answer you. Verily, those who are arrogant and supplicating to me in their ibadah of me, letting us know supplication is ibadah, will enter into the hellfire humiliated. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ مَنْ فَضْلِهِ And ask Allah for His blessings or His, his, his ni'mah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَابْتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ رِزْقِ Allah says, and seek your rizq from Allah. He didn't say seek it from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah or the angels and Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَضَلَّ مِمَّنْ يَدْعُوا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَسْتَجِيبِ لَهُ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَهُمْ مِنْ دُعَاهِ غَافِلِينَ غَافِلُونَ وَإِذَا حُشِرَ النَّاسِ كَانُوا لَهُمْ أَعْدَاءٍ وَكَانُوا وَكَانُوا بِعِبَادَتِهِمْ كَافِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And who is more misguided than the one who supplicates to other than Allah? Who will not answer them until the day of judgment? And they, with their du'a, are incapable of answering. Or they're, 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 they, those who are supplicating that they are the ghafidun. Because they're unaware. And the ones being supplicated are unaware. They're unable to answer your du'a. Now, if we say uh, the people of Arbazak, the Anbiya, the shuhada, the martyrs that Allah has mentioned, that they have they have a life. They are living. They're living now barzakh. But we have no authority. We have no proof from the Quran and the Sunnah, which we base our whole religion on. How do you know how to pray? You know how to pray because Allah has commanded you with salat in the, in the Quran, and you know the details from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the great Imams who witnessed Meaning the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een and those after them who carried forth this knowledge. This is how we know how to pray. So therefore, we have to go back to those sources if we want to have any kind of ibadah. To know if something is legislated in Islam, we go to those sources. But if we don't have any authentic proof that it was practiced like this by the great a'imma from the Sahaba on to after them, 
then how is it we can say that that's a legislated act of ibadah? Instead, it could be, in fact, shirk. And this is the problem also with Ahl al the people who are misguided, like the Khwarij, like look at groups like ISIS and others. Now, we're not saying they're committing shirk, but because they take some of the ayats, and as the people of disbelief also say, oh, look at these ayats that show violence and killing and jihad, uh, uh, killing people in the Quran, so it means, therefore, Muslims are violent and they kill people. This is the logic. And those groups like this, those extremist groups, they take some of the verses to implement their own views and opinions and practice these, these, these things, which they have no authority to do so because they, they're not practicing, they're not taking the whole Quran and the whole sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. They've, avoid, they've left, as the original Khawarij did, they took, the, some, they took some of the verses of the Quran and they didn't accept the sunnah. So this is what we have the case with Ahl al is they tend to take some of the verses and some of the nusus and they leave off others. They, they take that which supports what they believe and they leave off the rest. May Allah protect us from that. There are so many verses. We would be here all day if we talked about it. We'll end with this hadith of the Prophet wasallam that this should be very clear. The Prophet wasallam said to Ibn Abbas he said that إِذَا سَعَلْتَ فَأَسْأَلِ اللَّهِ فَأَسْأَلُ اللَّهِ he said, if you ask, dua, supplication, then ask of Allah. And if you seek assistance, then seek it from Allah. Letting us know, habitifillah, that the legislated mode, what we do in Islam is we supplicate to Allah. We don't supplicate to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We don't supplicate to anyone from the dead. We can ask the righteous and pious people that are living to supplicate for us. Please, brother, supplicate for me. Or someone you just feel is a good person who is, is a person on istiqama. Brother, please, sister, could you please pray for me? I'm having a tough time. Meaning that you will not give up prayer. And this person is living and they have the power to supplicate. But they don't have the power to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer. Only Allah can answer your dua. Supplicate to Allah. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fa'budullah. Wa'budullah. Wala tushriku bi Worship Allah alone. And do not associate partners with him. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.